Professor Friedman, there are certain social goods that cannot be supplied by uh, the private marketplace. Such as what? Um, well, let's say there's, there are goods that either the marginal benefits cannot be separated or that they're so lumpy that... Such as what? Uh, roads, I want examples. Roads? Roads. You can have private toll roads. You've had them for years. Is uh, there any reason why this interstate highway that you have, the, uh, the uh, great interstate uh, New York Thruway, is there any reason why that couldn't be leased out to private enterprises to run? And uh, they could finance it by charging a fee? Okay, my question concerns social goods. I, yeah. Do you accept the fact that there are certain goods that the private economy cannot supply? Uh, uh, I accept that there are goods which the private economy is not likely to supply. I accept that there are goods in which it is difficult through a private economic system to charge everybody who gets the benefits from it. Okay, in those cases, however, it is also true that it's not easy for the government to supply it. You see, the problem with the direction you're going is that there's a strong tendency to say, here's a market failure. I have no way in which uh, Rochester University can be made to pay those citizens of Rochester whose shirt is dirtied by the amount of smoke that comes from Rochester University's chimneys. I mean, that's a market failure. Rochester is imposing a cost on people and ought to pay them for it. It's buying their services, in effect, their services of letting their shirts get dirty so that Rochester can heat its building. Or right now, that's true, that's a problem. But in those same cases, it's also difficult to have government do anything about it. And if you're going to consider cases of market failure like that, you have to put into the balance the fact that when government seeks to achieve an answer to it, you're likely to have a government failure. I agree. Yeah. Okay, I was leading up to this question. Like, <laughs> okay, considering that there are externalities, like as you said, pollution, right. how can government limit itself to distinguish between the social goods and the private goods? It, well, it cannot. And there is no easy way to limit it. There are hard questions. There isn't an easy answer for every question. And the, my answer would be to you, twofold. It would be, first of all, if government decides to do something in that area, it will do least harm and most good if it does it via effluent charges or the equivalent, rather than via setting standards or imposing specific requirements. Second, Government ought not to step in and try to do anything unless there is a very, very strong case that the net disadvantages, the net third-party effects are of significant magnitude because the costs of doing it are significant. Government is going to do it imperfectly, and you're comparing one imperfection with another. And I think we've had a great deal of experience by now which suggests that you're about as likely to make matters worse as you are better. That's not a clean and neat answer. And I don't think you can get a clean and neat answer. Because I think in all of these cases, you're dealing with a balance sheet in which there are certain advantages of the proposed action, there are certain disadvantages, and you have to weigh them up. And all I'm urging is that you make sure you look at both sides of that balance sheet and not only at one. That you don't take the naive view which so often is taken that lo and behold, there's an evidence of a market failure, boom, government should step in and do something about it without taking into account the possibility of a government failure as well.